G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing part three of what it's like to run a fish room. If you haven't seen part one and part two, you can watch the whole playlist right here. But if you are good to go, let's get straight into it with this week's video. Look how many there are in this corner. Out of the three spawns, I've never seen them grouped together this much before. So this should be fairly easy, I hope. I'm just a bit worried that when I go there with the net, they're gonna just scatter throughout the aquarium. So I'm gonna to have to be careful and try and not let them scatter. Might make catching them really easy, but counting them, very difficult. I've, count, I've counted 10 so far that I've caught, put into the main tank. But this will be interesting. So guys, I've caught some of the Alto Lampologus calvus fry. And you can see there's some still in the corner here. I'm catching like two, one or two at a time moving in this way. Now this was a hill here, so I've smoothed it out with the net, made sure there was no fry on here, and I'm kind of drawing them out of the corner then catching one or two at a time. Now there is one fry on this bit, and you might see him move when I do this. Actually there's two. No, there it is one. Can you see that right there? So you'll be very gentle. So I'm trying to move him towards the front of the glass. This is really hard to do because I'm looking at the camera and then looking at the fish. So I'm just gonna look at the fish and hopefully it is on camera. So I'm just slowly, very patiently doing this, letting them swim into the net as much as I can and then slowly bringing them up, not to shock them. And I get on my ladder. You can see the little guy in there. And then quickly popping them in to this tank here. And I'm just being very gentle, letting them swim out of the net. So that's the 46th one. They kind of just sit at the bottom there, recover from that little ordeal, these poor little guys. So I just keep doing that. So now I'm gonna try and move one out of the corner. I'm just concentrating on watching rather than watching the camera while I do this. Because you've got to be very careful. You don't want to squash any. So you're just going to be gentle. Gently move them out of the way. Not try to panic them a little. As, try to keep them as calm as possible. There you go, see? Swam into the net. Scoop it up. Nice and slow. Not to freak them out. Because this is quite traumatic for fry this young. And then pop them in the tank and let them swim out. Takes quite a while. And there he goes, or she. So that's 47. I'm trying to keep count as much as I can. So just going back and forth and doing that. So that's what it's like to run a fish room and you've got to be patient with this sort of thing. Especially with fish like this. They are delicate, calvus are more delicate than your typical Tanganyikans and you just got to be patient and Try to move them out of the way. Look, they're sticking to the corner as much as possible. But anyway, I'm going to keep going with this because it's a lot easier to just do it without trying to record and commentate as I do it. But you get the idea. So I've caught 93 calvus fry. They're all scattered throughout this tank. And this is where they'll grow out for the next number of months. I will we'll also pop in a bristle nose or two over the next week or two, help me clean this algae off and get the calvus used to having sonos with them. Look at those little guys. I'll give them some microworms now, let them settle in, and I'll start up some brine shrimp as well so tomorrow I can feed them some brine shrimp, start to vary their diet straight off the bat. So one of the other things you have to do when you're running a fish room is move fish around in the fish room. So what you see here are my largest and oldest Alto Lamprologus calvus fry. These are my white calvus fry. They were born at the start of March 2020. It's now October 2020. And they're around an inch long. Some of them are just passing an inch, which is really nice to see. I intended to move my these, these fry into a larger go out tank earlier, uh, but I only have gotten around to doing it about uh, two weeks ago now. So I'm finally able to show you guys what they look like in a nice tank. 
uh, a tank with sand that's not bare bottom and a lot more rock work for them to uh, swim around in and have some caves and more shelter for them. So you can see they're uh, really active now. This is the most active I've seen them the entire time I've had them. Although the entire time I have had them, they've been on the top rack of tanks and they are kind of hard to see from um, lower down in the, on the fish room floor. Now, I wish I could put them into a larger tank. This tank is two foot long by two foot wide by about one and a half foot deep. Uh, but it is the only tank I have available at the moment. The fish that used to be in here were my black calvus, an adult pair, uh, not a breeding pair. However, they were constantly fighting. I thought they were a pair. When I first bought them, there was one that was large and one that was very, very small. However, they ended up growing to the same size and were constantly fighting. So I've put them in a tank with other Tanganyikan cichlids so that less dominant calvus is more protected now because there's other fish around for the other calvus to you know, see and all the aggression isn't really taken out on that poor calvus. Uh, it, it's getting some peace now. So that's good that uh, it's not getting belted all the time. So because the black calvus were doing nothing for me and I believe that either two females or two males, I moved them out and put my white calvus fry in here. And they look fantastic. I think they look amazing in this tank. The, they're really getting that cal the shape, that unique shape, that compressed body. And when they, they come to the front of the aquarium, when they think they're gonna get fed, they all point the same direction. They just look so cool in an aquarium. I think they'd make a fantastic centerpiece of any Tanganyikan aquarium, especially with gray rock or Syriu rock and some nice white sand, the black background. You can see they really do stand out. They are quite striking. And if I put my hand up towards the top of the tank, they think they're gonna get fed. They'll come up in a nice school, kind of all pointing the same direction. And they just look awesome, I think, especially with the stripes down their side. And again, that unique uh, compressed shape that calvus have and the slender body. The other thing is that these guys, I'm not sure if it happens with all calvus, but these particular fry are developing a bluish, greenish tinge down the flank, down the side of their body. Uh, when the light hits them correctly, it really does stand out, almost to the point where it's a similar look that my Lamprologus ocellatus gold have with a purple flanking down their side. These guys are developing they're this greenish, bluish iridescence down their flank, and it looks awesome. I really hope they keep that trait as they grow, but I don't think they will. I think it's just a thing that they're going through as they uh, continue to grow up, uh, just that, that they're getting, developing this coloration, but we'll see. Maybe they will keep that coloration and it, that'll be great if they do. But yeah, um, I'm really thrilled that they are doing so well in this aquarium. I didn't lose any during the transition, which is what I was really worried about. And it's gonna be a shame to sell them because I just love looking at this tank so much now because yeah, that's it's just such an active aquarium and I love the shape of Calvus. You know I've made it my channel logo. I love this fish so much and to see them like this is just really, it's just so cool. The other thing is I wish I could put them into a larger aquarium but I just don't have room at the moment. I want to put them into a four by two by two foot aquarium uh, that they can have more space to grow out in but I just don't have the room at the moment. I will eventually do that though. The other thing is I've got a, the second batch of Calvus Fry that I spawned. Uh, they were born about two months after these guys, so around May this year, May 2020. And some of those are as large as this first batch. They're growing quite fast. And the thing with Calvus Fry, you want to make sure if any are growing very large, you've got to take them out because they will eat the smaller fry. So the fry that they, that they were born with, they will eat those smaller fry. So you've got to keep the sizes separate. I haven't had that luckily, but I do have to move some of the bigger fry from the second batch into this tank. I really don't wanna to have to do that though because there are enough fry in this tank, I feel. This is a, 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 just a good size for them at the moment, but they're not gonna be in here for long because uh, they do need more space to grow out. But again, th that's all I could do at the moment. That's, all I, that's the only tank I could spare that's large enough. The next thing I need to do is uh, get a clutch of eggs out of my long fin bristlenose tank. They've kicked out another clutch, unfortunately. So I'm gonna to have to raise them myself in the breeder box. I'm not sure if you can pick it up on camera, but the breeder box that's operating kind of makes a gurgling sound every second or so, quite repetitive. I was hoping to turn that one off that I've got running. Uh, the, the catfish that I've got in this breeder box here 
are ready to go into their tank. However, now I've got to switch the breeder box over to the long fin bristlenose tank, so I'm gonna have it running for another about, about a week or two weeks longer. I've put the bristlenose clutch of eggs in the breeder box. Hopefully they're gonna be okay. I have hatched two clutches of eggs in this breeder box now, and they've been fine. Now, I was gonna put the baby bristlenose that you can see in this breeder box in the back in the tank, because they're pretty much ready to go back in with the parents in the main tank. However, speaking to my cousin Adam, He's left them in the breeder box before, and that's helped him uh, actually get no fungicized eggs. So what the thought is there is, these babies will basically eat and clean these eggs off as they fungicize, if any of them do fungicize. So I'm gonna keep them in here, and they're gonna help me raise these babies, basically. And what they'll do is, they'll also assist the babies in hatching. So as the babies hatch, and break free from their egg casing, these bristlenose will eat the actual egg casing. So that's the thought anyway. Hopefully it works and we'll see how it goes. And it worked. So that's a tip for you guys. If you ever have a clutch of eggs that are kicked out by your bristlenose catfish males, put the clutch in a fry saver like this and put some very young baby bristlenose in with them and those bristlenose will feed off the fungicized eggs. They will keep that clutch of eggs clean. They won't actually eat the eggs because they're too small to do so. But they are small enough just to eat the fungus alone. So this was a very, very successful attempt at raising this clutch of eggs. So the clutch of eggs is fully developed. The fry, as you can see, there was, I only left about six baby bristlenose in with the clutch of eggs. And as you can see, the entire clutch is developed now. They've completely absorbed their yolk sac and they're ready to go in their parents' tank. The other thing I'll just quickly point out is, you can notice that there's a skewer in this tank, a wooden skewer. I was using that to hold down boiled vegetables for the fry that were already developed before the clutch of eggs had hatched. I was feeding the five or six fry that were in this aquarium, uh, small pieces of zucchini and broccoli so they could eat. What I'm gonna do now is get these guys out of this aquarium and put them into their main aquarium with their parents. And the easiest way to do that is to just disconnect the sponge filter. So there's a little sponge filter here, you can see this sponge here. And there's a pipe, you can see there's a pipe slowly bringing the air up into this container. I'm gonna disconnect that and I'm just gonna dip this whole container into the aquarium and the bristlenose will come out on their own. I'm gonna turn it off. And it's so much quieter. <laughs> well, so much better already. Okay, next thing to do, get this skewer out of here. Now there are some bristlenose attached to it, they're all off. Take the lid off. Now, here's the attachment. Let's see it lifting out. Make sure you don't have any bristlenose on that attachment. And basically I'm gonna start pouring water into the tank. Once there's some water in there, lift the whole thing up sit it in the aquarium and I'm just going to sit it on its side on the bottom of the aquarium being careful not to squash any bristlenose that are already on the bottom of the aquarium so just waiting for one to move out of the way and that's it so the bristlenose are here and they'll come out on their own I'm not going to bother trying to take them out right now the other thing the other benefit of leaving this whole container in here I'm going to leave it in here overnight is that the bristlenose will clean it for me. Basically, there's algae in here. It's beneficial food for these bristlenose in here for them to eat. So I'm just gonna leave it in here. No point in me washing it out when there's food in there for them. The point of this is, if you have a clutch of eggs that the bristlenose kick out, prevent them from getting fungicized, put some really young bristlenose catfish fry in there with the clutch of eggs, and they'll keep that clutch of eggs clean for you. And the other tip, let the bristlenose do the cleanup work for you saves you having to clean up this little container and it's providing food for them. So there you have it guys, part three of what it's like to run a fish room. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I'd really appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up now guys. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.